Welcome back to EE375. In this uh, week, we're going to be moving into a, a unit covering what are called flux models, which is modeling how things uh, move across uh, space uh, as a function of time. Um, and this map here is actually a map of the greater Boston area uh, showing uh, a study on methane fluxes. Uh, actually, most of these fluxes end up being uh, leaky uh, natural gas infrastructure across Boston, which is an aging infrastructure, which is a, which is a project done uh, in our department by uh, professors uh, Hutera and, and Phillips, who drew drove a methane, methane sensor across this the red lines here showing uh, the route they drove and detected all these methane spikes. Uh, and this, I thought, was a great example of the idea of uh, one of the most important applications in environmental sciences of, or one of many important applications in environmental sciences of measuring, modeling fluxes, is the measurement, modeling and measurement of pollution. Uh, so when we're dealing with pollution, we're dealing with things that are often in, invisible, so they have to be, you know, measured indirectly to figure out where they are and where they're going. Uh, they may be coming from point sources, or it may be things we need to infer across uh, from a distributed set of sources across a landscape. And you know, there's a wide range of uh, environmental impacts from different pollutants uh, that have a wide range of human health impacts, impacts on ecosystems and impacts on our you know, uh, human infrastructure. And uh, man, I mean, there's just so much uh, to unpack here, but um, kind of taking for granted that that most of my listeners are, are, you know, for this class are familiar with many of the, the environmental problems associated with pollution. I'm going to kind of dive into kind of some of the questions that we might have when we're trying to understand uh, a pollutant, such as uh, how much of the pollutant is there out there in the ecosystem? Uh, where is it and where is it going? Uh, who's going to be infected? And, and what are the damages that are going to be associated with uh, any particular pollutant? Uh, from that wide range of, of questions, I'm going to distill them down into uh, kind of one core motivated question uh, for this unit, which is kind of what determines the spatial dispersion pattern of any particular pollutant? How do we predict how it's going to move across uh, the environment? Because if a, a, a pollutant that does not move, uh, that it stays locally, is, is usually much easier to manage. Uh, often where they cause the greatest impact is when they are able to spread across systems. And almost all pollutants that we deal with have some capacity uh, to go through the air, to leak through the soils, to get into water tables, uh, and to move across uh, ecosystems. Uh, so if we're trying to understand the spatial pattern of pollutants and how they're dispersing, I'm going to distill that further down into a, a very precise uh, mathematical question, which is, uh, can we predict uh, the concentration of any particular pollutant across space, uh, potentially in three dimensions, x, y, and z, as a function of time? Now, that question of being able to predict concentrations across space and time uh, requires that we introduce a new class of models that build on what we were previously doing. So in our previous unit on populations, uh, we explored concepts related to the idea of dynamic models, models that are dynamic in time, where uh, the state of the system in the future is this uh, function in part of the state of the system right now. Yes, with possibly other covariates, but one of those covariates explaining the future is the current state of the system. Uh, and so this unit, we're going to be uh, looking at modeling fluxes, uh, which is when we're uh, extending this to the case where we're interested in how things are changing both across space and time. And thinking about this in kind of the general form where our dynamic change in the concentration, our dc, dt, is some function of how that, uh, the, the pattern of, of that uh, pollutant, the concentration of it across space. So this dc, dx here uh, is, is the concentration across space. Obviously, that could be x, y, or z, or all of them. So that's kind of the motivating question. 
And in the next video, I'm going to pick up with kind of what I like to do in this class, start with the simplest possible way that we could model that and then build up from there. Thanks.